Chapter 11 Lady Ursa Padding softly along, Renard went back into the forest. This time he certainly had plenty to tell Ermelin. His jubilation overflowed like the river. He could no longer resist the need to share it. It was a fair way through the forest to Malpass. It was a pleasure to walk along beneath the trees on this limpid evening, with the golden glow of sunset at the end of the pathways. The wind had subsided, the willow warblers were singing among the leaves. At first, Renard went along the edge of the forest. From time to time, he cast a glance at the plain between the tops of the trees. It looked as though the water was already subsiding. It, too, shone like gold. It was indeed a summer flood, which upset nobody, except perhaps Stinker Pie, for his pal Outram was dead. Suddenly, it became dark. Renard thought that night was falling, but it was only a thicket of dark thorns beneath the close-set, stunted oak trees. He realised that he was very near Galarand, and at that very moment an idea came into his head. The most wicked and perverse idea that ever was. He would go to Galarand, and he would be the first to tell Lady Ursa. And then he was more cheerful than ever, and restless also, with the heat crying in his blood, making him call out in front of the den and moan in a springtime voice. Is that you, Renard? He could scarcely believe his ears and eyes. Ursa had appeared suddenly and was already standing before him. She was large and graceful, larger than he remembered, with a softer voice and a more tender glance. She was really a most affectionate she-wolf, a long-bodied female, with a wheedling look as she trembled slightly before him. It was because the charming trickster himself did not realise how bright was his own lustre, and what a glow of triumph shone round his entire small person, his wild eyes and his fur. Eastgrim isn't here, said Lady Ursa. Come in, Renard. She pushed aside the brambles and slid through the thorns. Renard followed her, his heart beating, and yet the she-wolf, speaking too quickly and in a voice that gradually died away, filled the silence. There are only the three little ones here, Lupert, Lupo and Lapel. When they worry me, I tell them to go and play. You have three as well, haven't you, Renard? How is the fortunate Ermelin? Eastgrim neglects me. He's always away. The excuse is that I'm still nursing the cubs. There they are, the little devils. Go and play, children. Go and play. Are you still following me, Renard? They had reached the thickest part of the undergrowth. Nobody could see them now. Renard embraced Ursa and caressed her. But all at once a thought stopped him and curbed his transports. He had said nothing, and the news he was bearing, frothing like new wine, oppressed him all at once and made him lose heart. Oh, Lady Ursa, sighed Renard. What's the matter? What are you afraid of, dear Rufus? If he comes back... He won't come back, said Renard, trying to produce a tear. Poor Eastgrim, noble Eastgrim, my uncle. Is he dead? asked the young she-wolf. Oh, not so fast, dear lady, said Renard. Dead, you say? Well, he's as good as dead. And then he told the story of the rams. He told it in true Renard fashion, naturally, saying nothing of his designs and the part he had played. It was just a case of two men fighting over a woman who was making them settle things. Just imagine Candida, sighed Lady Ursa. These ewes and rams behave in the strangest way. Two rams, what a collection. What do you think of it all, friend Renard? The next moment, Renard forgot everything except Ursa. She caressed him and nibbled him. At last, at last, she moaned. I've loved you for so long. You've loved me too, Renard. I know it. Evening was falling. The wolf cubs were grunting in the bramble thicket, but nothing distracted them from each other and from their love play. Dead or alive, cried Ursa suddenly. He ought to be. It was coming to him. And they laughed, but their laughter was suddenly frozen. They had heard nothing. All at once there was a crashing of branches, 
a crackling and rending of brambles, and a terrible howl that echoed to the depths of the forest. Now I understand, howled Eastgrim. I understand everything. Now it's a fight to the death, Renard, to the death. Run now, you poor fox. You know how Eastgrim can run, but you will know it to your cost. <laughs>